You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network, live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Fabulous. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. Good day, good day, good day, good Sunday, fun day morning. I'm your host, Randall White, and you are listening to the place where Californians come together, the number one place to talk about current trends in food, beverages, travel, and tourism. It is our goal, of course, to give you the tools you need to enjoy life's pleasures in a healthy, sustainable, and community-focused manner. We're very community-focused here at Eat, Drink, Explore. Indeed we are. Radio, that's the voice of Patty Pyburn, my lovely, talented co-host. Hello, Patty. Hello, Randall White and everyone out there listening and joining us on Ustream. Good morning. That's right. In fact, I... We've added a tool to the website, mm-hmm. eatdrinkexplore.com, uh, where it's a uh, an interactive uh, sort of a chat uh, social oh, stream. Right. So people watching can join in, comment, exactly. questions. Questions. We love to hear the you. questions. And we'll give you a shout out. And if you're trying to promote your Twitter feed, that's a good way to do it. You know, just to mm-hmm. start getting in on a <laughs> conversation like that. All right. Straight ahead on this hour of the program, we're discussing some tips and tricks for developing a healthy plant-powered diet. We'll also take a look at some of the state's highest rated campgrounds and RV parks. Plus, we'll speak with TripAdvisor about their top U.S. travel destinations for 2013. Then next hour, I'm very excited about our first guest in the second hour. We're speaking with the man at the center of a giant oyster controversy here in California. Patty will have a bit more on that in just a moment. Also, a couple of great gift ideas for the grow-it-yourself foodies in your life. And then we'll wrap up the show with Chef David Goss uh, on why you should consider working honey into your holiday dishes. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so... But right now, it is time to check in with Patty Pyburn and find out what the latest news is. Patty? That's right. Well, this morning at the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk on this Sunday, we are looking at some of the important stories. The government plans to shut down more than a third of California's oyster production in the coming months. The Department of the Interior is turning a portion of Point Reyes National Seashore into a wilderness area. Drake's Bay Oyster Company is currently operating in that zone and has a 40-year land lease that's set to expire. Interior Secretary Ken Salazar made the decision to close the company, sparking a nationwide backlash against the federal government. The owner of the company is not going uh, to close his operation, though, without a fight and filed a lawsuit this week to keep operating. As Randall mentioned, coming up in the next hour, we'll be speaking with owner Kevin Lunny, about the lawsuit, his company, and this huge wave of public support. It's become a nationwide story. People I can imagine. East Coast, I I just did a little search on it last night because I wanted to make sure we had the latest information. Mm -hmm. And the news sources weren't all just like Marin Independent Journal, San Francisco Chronicle, Sonoma. Yeah, it was not just statewide. It was it was Fox News, it was USA Today. Like I mean it was it is a national story. If it's a third of the state's production, imagine where all those oysters are heading and I um, automatically started thinking about what the menu is going to look like for oysters when, if if in fact that does happen. One of the big, big issues that I was reading about is that uh, we already ship in a lot of seafood from foreign countries, uh, just, you know, like other products. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Here we have some of the best oysters grown in the world, and we may be cutting out a third of those and then shipping others in from you know, like Southeast Asia and that sort of thing. Right. And then you have to wonder if that <clears throat> volume will just fall into place or if there's going to be, you know, a change in prices where right. the supply and demand are not uh, meeting up. So. I saw a producer for, it's called Hogs Island or Hog Island uh, oysters up in mm-hmm. the Bay Area. And he said he, on an annual basis, can never meet demand, which right. is a nice position to be in as a <laughs> as a producer of something, right? I mean, right. And I've heard the same. We have the, the Morro Bay Oyster Company yeah. up the road from us here. And um, he has the same issue. He has more demand. Demand really than he has supply, and he keeps growing his company to try to meet that. So yeah, so it, I can't. I just cannot wait to talk to Kevin about uh, his situation and, and how, how he plans to fight it. So uh, sorry to interrupt you, Patty. I just uh, right. was very <laughs> interested in uh, that story and can't wait to hear more about it. Well, I have another story for you, and it's a new trend in holiday decorating. It's hitting homes in California. 
Families are taking a different approach to the traditional Christmas tree, and instead of cutting down a live tree, Randall, I know your family has done uh, live Christmas trees. Yes, uh, as we a have tradition. one. We we didn't put it in the house this year. We put uh-huh. it on the curb. I mean, out near near the curb, so that people can see it when they drive in. And how fun! When I was in Spain, my aunt has the same tradition with her family, and they have this huge, beautiful tree that's from the very first Christmas they had in their house. Oh, what I love a, it! Yeah. yeah, it's such a great memory that you're creating. So instead of cutting down a live tree or dragging out the artificial version out of storage. Many people are now renting a tree for the season, and just about every popular type and size of evergreen is available. You can even order the trees complete with energy-saving LED lights already in place. A company called Rent a Living Christmas Tree will deliver it right to your door, pick it up after the holidays, so easy. And for people living in much of the Bay Area, Santa Cruz, and Monterey counties, other similar companies have sprung up in Oregon and Washington. The trees are used for several seasons and then planted when they get too large for most homes. It's a great plan. I love it. Complete with LED lights. Yeah, and then uh, it, that is a, it's amazing. And it it'll, it can come decorated with lights, as you said. Yeah. It's so easy. They <laughs> drop it off. You put it in there, and then no muss, no fuss. Right. I like it. <laughs> some of the some of the more popular sizes I noticed were already t- last night when I looked. Okay, so plan ahead is key here. Plan ahead. Yeah. Okay, another growing. Uh, a tradition I see there. Yeah. No pun intended. Literally. <laughs> okay, I'm clever when I don't even intend to be. A chemical compound found in hops, a key ingredient in making beer, could help you fight off your next cold. Scientists at a university research hospital in Japan say the compound humulone has antivirus and anti-inflammatory properties. This is according to the Associated Free Press. Mm-hmm. Here's the catch. And there is always a catch with these kinds of things. Yes, there is. (laughs) And I know what you're going to say already. (laughs) Ripping into a keg or a case. (laughs) (laughs) The amount used by researchers was equivalent to drinking 30 cans of your average beer. So beer intake, upping your beer intake isn't really the way to do it. But perhaps we'll see this as we do a lot of things coming out as a supplement. Now, the university uh, that... The, where the researchers work for this, it's uh, Sapporo University. But <laughs> here's the whole thing: <laughs> as soon I, as you said that, <laughs> I and then and then the Sapporo Beer Company did come out with the press release on it. But uh, the university itself is a public university that has been around since I think the 1950s and mm-hmm. has a m- hospital attached. It is a medical research okay. facility. So the name kind of I don't want people to get the wrong idea because it's not. It's not entirely just a brewery coming up with it's, this study. It's not a beer university. No, no, no. This is a this is an honest to goodness uh, medical research facility. It just happens to have the Sapporo name. Okay, okay. So <laughs> a, a good disclaimer to make yes. to clear that up. Exactly. So Randall, um, the weather forecast is quite easy for me today. Yeah, roll California it out. weather, mild sunny days in the forecast for most of the state, sixties to seventies from San Francisco to Los Angeles, overnight temps in the fifties. That's why we are here in California. Yeah. This is the reason. Oh, it's beautiful. I did see rain in the forecast uh, all over the state. Wednesday, Thursday, yes. right in there. About midweek, and we, we've been watching that because it was really slight at first, but it does look like the the forecast models are growing, so there's... We're going to be seeing that in a couple days. Is this another storm coming from the south? Because it looked like L.A. was getting more rain than, say, Sacramento. I will have to double check. I think you might be right on that. And Mm. we, as I have been becoming a little more educated with the weather we had last week, those south, the storms coming from the south tend to hit a lot of places a little uh, more drastically. Yeah. All right, Patty, thank you for the update on the news. Stick around, everyone, just after the commercial break. The Plant Power Diet. That's actually the name of the book this woman has written. She's a registered dietitian from the L.A. area, as a matter of fact. And she'll be joining us in just a moment. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the 
the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today. By contacting the team you need, head to S.S. Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com, and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. It will be a while before we see the labeling of genetically modified foods, but that doesn't mean you can't be a smart shopper and head to the store armed with knowledge. Our California Love website has a list of local companies producing food right here in California that are GMO-free and, in most cases, organic, too. Head to CA, as in California, L-U-V, as in shorthand for love, dot com. It's that easy to find our list of local companies with your health in mind. You can also find this list on our Apple and Android smartphone and tablet apps, which are absolutely free in the App Store. Simply search Eat, Drink, Explore and download it to your device. Our California Love website also contains a vegetable and fruit chart so you can more easily buy local produce that's in season. Also, fresh and local recipes from the farmer's market. Head there. Check it out right now. C-A-L-U-V dot com. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. Jessica. Hi, Mrs. Johnson. Is Megan there? Sure. Follow me. The kids are in the kitchen making sandwiches. <laughs> hey, Julie. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Megan. Hey, Megan. Yeah? You're a total freak. God, you're ugly. And dumb. Oh, and your makeup makes you look like a tramp. Tommy Morris told me you guys made out. Oh, my God. Everybody knows. The whole school knows. He said your breath smelled like garbage. And that dress is totally hideous. You look like a big, fat clown. Disgusting. Oh, and by the way, nice zit. (laughs) If you wouldn't say it in person, why say it online? Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it, don't forward it. For more information, visit ncpc.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, Crime Prevention Coalition of America, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. Eight nineteen on this Sunday morning, and a very, very good day to you as we, what, as we celebrate the holidays, I guess. <laughs> as we get rolling on this Sunday morning. <laughs> I still am uh, coffee-deprived at this uh, point of the show, so I apologize if I'm we not... We haven't got the IV drip going in <laughs> no. yet. Well, you know, uh, I it's rare, it's a rare occasion for me to stay up past midnight, Uh Past eleven, really, on any day of the week, and this uh, past weekend, your with... age is showing, Randall. I know. <laughs> well, no, it comes from years of being a morning anchor. It, yeah, that's you, true. You get stuck in yeah. that uh, rut, and then um, so anyway, on Friday night, we hosted the San Luis Obispo Holiday Parade uh, from our studio here, and you can watch that online at eatdrinkexplore.com. Just uh, click on the Holiday Parade button, and uh, you can you can see a good portion of it. But we were so amped up from that, and I had coffee right before the sh- right before the parade mm-hmm. began. Uh, I didn't go to bed till like a quarter to two. <sighs> oh my goodness! And you know what about last night? Were you up late last night? No, I actually went to bed around ten. But uh, you know when another sign of age is <laughs> when you <laughs> when you um, don't recover. 
in one day. <laughs> you don't just snap back. No. <laughs> you don't just snap back. We're losing our elasticity. So my whole point is I apologize for my demeanor this morning, my slowness. This coffee will kick in any moment and I'll be right back up to speed. So welcome back everyone to the Eat Trick Explorer radio show. I am your host, Randall White. That was the lovely, talented Patty Pyburn speaking with me. And this is our health and fitness segment. Sharon Palmer is joining us. She's the author of The Plant Powered Diet. And uh, she is uh, down in the... the in, no, Are you in the Inland Empire? No, you're in the San Gabriel Valley? Yes, that's right. That's right. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Oh, fantastic. You know, uh, every single year, because we're heading into the new year, I tell myself I am incorporating more vegetables into my diet You this and year. millions of other people, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So... Uh, we know that there's good reasons. We know that vegetables are good for us. But you say you really can power yourself on vegetables, that it is uh, it should become the main staple. You're not necessarily recommending people completely cut meat out. Mm-hmm, that's right. Yes, I, I recommend that, that about three-fourths of your plate be filled with some sort of plant food for, the, you know, for people that are interested in a more plant-based diet for health. And then you know, people that are vegans and vegetarians, then they can be even including more plant foods on their plate. Right. But and it's, there's so many health benefits attributed with this kind of eating style. And so uh, what are some of the health benefits that come along with including more plant-based foods? Well, you know, science shows us that your lifestyle can reduce your risk of chronic disease by 80%. So that's just overwhelming, you know, that to think that you could reduce your risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes by 80%. So, but specifically um, when it comes to diet, a, a whole plant food based diet, you know, full of whole grains and, and beans and lentils and nuts and seeds and fruits and vegetables, that a diet like that can help lower your risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, certain types of cancer. It can um, provide you with a healthier weight. And even, um, you know, like brain function, Alzheimer's disease protection, those kinds of things we're finding out now, too. Clearly, I haven't had much plant-powered food this last week because <laughs> <laughs> my brain is not working. You're lagging. So, Sharon, I was looking at your website, and I noticed that you have um, some recipes and things on here. Do you think that sometimes people just lack a little bit of imagination about incorporating more vegetables, and they just can't really see how that would work for their lifestyle? I think you're exactly right. I think people have still have this idea when they're planning their meals, you know, we still think, okay, what's for dinner? Let's, we're going to have chicken tonight. And then, you know, there's a little pile of vegetables besides the, beside the chicken and then maybe mashed potatoes. And really, we should be turning around that whole thinking style. When, when you think of what's for dinner tonight, you should think of the vegetable. That's what I like to recommend. So maybe you're shopping at the farmer's market and you see this time of year Swiss chard, you know, beautiful mm-hmm. rainbow Swiss chard. So then that, you start thinking that way that, oh, let's have Swiss chard. What, I'm gonna, what am I going to prepare with that? Maybe I'll do quinoa or uh, maybe some, you know, if you're a vegan, maybe tofu or then maybe just a smaller amount of um, animal protein if you're doing chicken. But if you start thinking of like stir fries and, and pasta dishes where you're combining all these Lots of plant foods with a smaller amount of animal food. And this is something that we see in traditional diets throughout the world. You know, animal foods were precious. And it, there were all these mixed dishes. You, you know, the, there was, it wasn't so much this little pile of corn, you know, on your plate. It, there were the, all these traditional mixed dishes with lots of plant foods because that was really the sustenance that people had. We have the proportions on our We've plate We've kind of wrong. turned things around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. America In America, we eat three times the global rate of animal protein. So we're eating three times as much meat as any other, as the world, you know. <clears throat> so we really have this unique style of eating that's really not uh, helping our health too much. <laughs> it's a sign of affluence, right, to have more animal-based uh, products on your plate. But then it's funny, I think we have a little bit of a twist to that in california the then the more wealthy you are the more you tend to switch i think to like the vegetarian lifestyle because that's i don't know if it's in vogue or hip or it's the trend (laughs) yeah right i think you're right well you know historically you're right It, it, it was a sign of of wealth and also industrialized industrialization as people started eating more meat but then now we know um through studies that 
so socioeconomic and educational um, factors have an impact. People tend to have healthier diets that are, include more fruits and vegetables with socioeconomic and educational back, you know, that factor. So you're right. It's like, um, you know, as we become, you know, as we become more interested in health and nutrition, then we start gravitating to more of a plant-based diet in general, you know? Yeah, go ahead, Patty. Well, I was going to say, I noticed you have a Meatless Monday icon also on your website. And we mm-hmm. recently uh, talked about Meatless Monday here on Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. And do you, so do you think that if people can't go all in and just mm-hmm. get meats out of their diet, like even a little bit of movement towards that that is, is a beneficial? Oh, yes, I, I agree with that. In fact, that's one of my main philosophies in my book is that, you know, not everybody is going to be a vegan or a vegetarian. I mean, right now the surveys show that maybe up to 8% of America is vegetarian and half of that is vegan. So, uh, you know, this is not something that everybody wants to do, but we have more and more people interested in reducing their meat and maybe having like one or two days a week that they go meatless. And this is a huge trend. Uh, the surveys are showing that up to a, a third of the population is is actually out there trying to have meatless meals. Like they're consciously thinking about, okay, I'm going to have a meatless meal this today. A full third, so, huh? Yeah, it's really encouraging. So it's all this this whole meatless Monday thing, you know, like starting out the day week, let's be creative and let's do a really plant-based meal tonight and the whole family can enjoy it. And I mean, I do it at home with my family two days a week. And I mean, we nobody even really notices that it's, that, uh, it's a meatless meal. So that's when you know you're doing it right. Right. You have to be creative in the kitchen. Um, I'm, I imagine Sharon to pull that off. But you know, I, one example is pasta night is so easy to do mm-hmm. meatless. You know, that's kind of one, what we mm-hmm. do one pasta night a week. And, and there's so many delicious, uh, meatless pasta. You know, I have a great, um, lasagna recipe in my book, that uh, has kale and broccoli, little thin layers, and it, it's so good that, I mean, my family lo- just laps it up. So, <laughs> Sure, and you know what you said that struck me <clears throat> is that uh, by switching to a, pan- a plant-powered diet, you can reduce your risk of disease by 80%. If there was a pill on the market that people could take that would do that, it would be flying off the shelves. And exactly. so, right? <laughs> Well, exactly. The statistics show, I, I should probably um, explain that, that if healthy lifestyle, which would be a plant-based diet and exercise, and mm-hmm. if you didn't smoke, if you did those three things, you could reduce your risk by 80%. And you're right. There is no pill on the market that would can ever do that. You no. Know? That's so fantastic. It's, it's, Sharon, it's I got to so I gotta fun. stop it there. Okay. I apologize. Sharon Palmer, author of The Plant Powered Diet. Get all her information online, eatdrinkexplore.com, under our program summaries. Sharon, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, stick around, everyone. Just after the break, we're going to find out where California's top-rated campgrounds and RV parks are. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. S.S. Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to S.S. Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. Hello.
Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.mpca.org. What if it wasn't always about getting ahead? What if you didn't care about being on the fast track? What if your career goals were to change? Instead of flying off to the big interview, what if you flew somewhere else altogether? To embark on a different track? To volunteer in ways you never dreamed of? In places you never imagined yourself being? Like a tiny island in the Pacific, barely visible on a map, but where needs are easy to see. Or a village on the African continent where just a little training in HIV awareness can change the fate of thousands. What if you decided to share your skills with others and help someone else get ahead? Peace Corps. Life is calling. How far will you go? To find out more, call 800-424-8580 or visit peacecorps.gov. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to EatDrinkExplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com. Eat, drink, explore media, your lifestyle information source. And a very good Sunday morning, everyone, 8.33. Now the time. We hope your day is off to a great start. Ours is thus far. Patty Pyburn joining me. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Randall White. So, Patty, I'm just, uh, I've known you for years. <laughs> I'm just going to take a stab in the dark. You're not a big camper. Well... I'd like to be, but um, I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me working more vegetables into my diet. <laughs> uh, no audio on Patty, huh? No. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm hmm. hearing her in my ear. Yeah, you're, that mic's working. That's working? You yeah. can hear me? Okay. Uh-huh. So, uh, solo on the board. Oh, you've hit the solo button. So... Um, uh, Patty, you keep talking. Hold okay. on. Okay. We got it. We're back in business. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We're having a little audio technical <laughs> difficulties over there. So uh, back to the topic at hand, camping. And so I camped quite a few times as a child. My mom had one of those pop top red and white VW camper vans. Really? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And we'd pack it up and go somewhere in northern Arizona and camp. And But with my kids, I haven't done that. Oh, right. So one of these days, we're going to have to hop in your RV and give it a whirl. Which is uh, a stretch on camping. <laughs> but the older I get, the less I want to lay on the ground um, to sleep. I can tell you that much. And that's why the RV is worked in. Plus, we can take the pets easily and that sort yes, of thing. Yeah. Well, um, certainly when you travel around, you want to make sure you find the right place to go. And there's a new list out of A-rated 
are this is nationwide, not just in California, but we'll focus on the California ones. Uh, a rated places to camp and uh, bring your rig. Guestrated.com has those ratings, and Bob McKinnon with Guest Rated joins us right now. Hey, Bob. Hey, good morning. How is everybody? Fantastic. And we've got some nice December California camping weather right now. Uh, where should people head? And, and how, do we, how do you put these ratings together? Is it sort of like how AAA does it for hotels? Well, actually, I, I, I probably compare us more to TripAdvisor, and people are familiar with that. We're, we're sort of the TripAdvisor for the campground industry. That's funny. We have and, TripAdvisor uh, coming on next segment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> right, so it's a good... I'm glad I could segue for you. I love it, yes. So, uh, <laughs> so people, just like with TripAdvisor, say, hey, I stayed at this place. Uh, the water facilities were great. The noise from the freeway was bad, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, what we started out as... Uh, Oh, about four or five years ago, was a uh, to, to try to create a detailed satisfaction survey for the campground industry. Nobody really was providing that, and it was kind of hit and miss out there for the campers. So we actually have a very detailed questionnaire, much more so than TripAdvisor, and it's and it's designed both to help the camper decide where to go and how other campers uh, have rated their experience, but it provides also some really detailed operational feedback for the campgrounds to help raised the bar for their uh, services and facilities, and uh, it's proving to be quite popular. You know, Bob, I was out uh, near Port San Luis at Avila Beach, and that's a popular spot, even popular with uh, Randall White. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a 10-mile drive from my house, and I yeah. feel like we're I'm completely getting away. But you're a world away. It's such uh-huh. a great place. So what was interesting is I was getting some video out there, and there were a couple of RVs that were kind of maneuvering in and out of some spots, and it was like a handoff, a baton pass for this prime spot that oh yeah these people have identified and one of the gentlemen said you know i really don't want to be interviewed for your news program because we do not want people to know about this pristine (laughs) beautiful location (laughs) so really being in the know i think could really make a difference in your in your vacation experience right well that's what we we try to provide is an opportunity for campers to pass along their little little tips and stories that they've learned along the road and I mean, obviously, somebody will want to keep their secret spot secret, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, in the eight parks that were received the awards this year in California, there, there's really a terrific diversity. Um, actually, the list includes a park very near where you're referring to, uh, down in Pismo Beach. Oh, right. Uh, uh-huh. Right on the coast. Pismo Coast Village has been... Um, a winner three out of the last five years. I've heard that that's a good place mm-hmm. to go. We've yet to, I haven't brought the RV there there yet to that location, but I've heard good stuff about it. Yeah, but we also have, I mean, it, it, uh, about half of the list are highly developed, what you would probably term, you know, RV resort type facilities. But we've also got, you know, rustic camping up in the Sierras, up above Shaver Lake. It's mm. a great little spot called Wishon Village that, uh, has won two years in a row now, and they offer tent camping and uh, and much more of a you know a mountain camping kind of an experience. So, really, quite a diversity of what uh, what campers are reviewing today. Hey, Bob, I'm wondering if a park needs to be or a campground needs to be privately owned in order to be part of the rating service, or if it can be a, a state or a federal uh, campground. You know, like you have the Forest Service sites, and then you have something, say, like Yosemite National Park? Oh, sure. Great question, Randall. I, we, we really started out um, under contract to the National Association of RV Parks and Campgrounds, which probably 95% of their members are, are privately owned and operated. Uh, some of them are actually concessionaires for public uh, lands. But oh, mm-hmm. over the past few years, um, we've gotten more and more parks involved in the public um, agencies. In fact, uh, two of our winners uh, this year were state parks in uh, South Dakota. Really? Uh huh. Good, yeah, so, good for them. Um, it, there's really no restriction. The 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 campers can go on to the guestrated uh, dot com website. Uh, we also distribute to other websites. In fact, one of our largest is camping dot com, mm-hmm. and uh, they can search for a park uh, that they're interested in or an area, and um, the icons will pop up on the screen. They can see what other campers have said about them, and they can leave a review. Um, Many parks will promote uh, the feedback just as as if you went to, uh, you know, a hotel and they offer you an online comment 
right? uh, opportunity. You see more and, and so more. Many of our reviews come in that way. You see more and more hotels that have the little TripAdvisor box in the corner showing the most recent comments, you know, uh, regarding their location. And so I'm, they're starting to do that with guest rated now for the campgrounds, huh? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, our, our partner site, camping.com, has actually put that on their uh, their home page. They have the the top rated campgrounds and most recent reviews that are linked out to the individual pages for parks. So it's a lot more user friendly for pe- people to find all they want to know in one place and be able to see how other campers have reviewed their experience. It's yeah, we're getting lots of great fe- positive feedback on it. Bob, how specific? Once you get to a so let's say we know that. Uh, Let's use Yosemite as an example. We know that the Upper Pines Campground is a uh, top destination. But, you know, there's maybe 120 sites within the Upper Pines, but only two or three of them are sort of, you know, kind of isolated and you can walk down to the Merced River or, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, is that information you can find on your site? <clears throat> Which spots within a highly rated campground are desirable? Well, it depends on how detailed our, our campers, you know, supply information on their experiences. Mm. But mm-hmm. many of them do refer to the specific campsite or specific view in the comments that they submit. And, of course, then they rate the overall campground on a report card scale. You know, they give it A through F in key categories, like their overall experience or the quality of the campsite and facilities, the cleanliness of the restrooms, which is always very important. So, those are those are the key um, rating factors that are are published right online. And Bob, it probably depends too. I would imagine strategically, like on time of year, what events might be happening oh, in the right. area. Do you need? Is this a campground where you really need to think ahead and sign up early? I'm sure all those factors must come into play. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it is it, uh, just like you know, other review sites. The the opportunities there for the camper to to share in their own words, and that's what we encourage them to do: is give tips to other campers about their visit. Things to do and see, and uh, um, you know, help other campers enhance their own their future visit. So your newest listing, uh, you have. Uh, I imagine. Do you give Do you give any of the places like F ratings <laughs> or <laughs> any bad well, grades? Actually, we don't. We don't give anybody any ratings. It's the camper. Oh right. Uh-huh. Uh, but um, yes, it's true. Some campers might not have a good experience, and I'll be honest with you. Um, the ones that made our A grade award, if I flipped through their reviews for the year, I could probably find a D or an F in every one of them. Oh, okay. So, you know, nobody's perfect, and we believe that the reviews should be transparent, and you should see the, you know, the happy guests as well as the ones who did not have a good experience. Now, throughout the United States, how many campgrounds received an A level? Uh, this year, 42 um, out of about 4,000 that were oh. that received reviews. So it was a, a, a little over 1% re- received the top grade. And of those 42, how many were in California? Eight of them. About Eight? 20% of them. That's yeah. impressive. Mm-hmm. Very much so. I mean, California is the number one camping and RVing state uh, in the U.S., and so it's not surprising that they have such a high number. You know, the other thing I, I ought to mention, um, we think the credibility in the award is really important for mm-hmm. the campers, that, that they know that this is just not based on you know, one or two guest comments, but we have a minimum of 100 reviews that a, that a camper, a campground must receive during a year's period of time. And we only keep those those reviews in the database for that 365 days. So oh. um, you may find some comments, uh, you know, back a year or two from previous campers, but the grade that the campground receives is only based on current data and it's based on a minimum sample of 100 so that's great parks on our list yeah the california parks um i think the smallest park received a little over 100 reviews but the largest received almost third or over 1300 so So you can really get a a good sample Mm -hmm. a lot of information out there because bob we only have a few seconds left here but i want to uh, comment on that i you know i've I, sometimes I've seen poorly rated or really highly rated things on Yelp, for instance, mm-hmm. and then I see they have three reviews, you know, <laughs> and two are from the owners. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so no, so when you've got a campground that has thirteen hundred reviews, you have a pretty good sense of 
of where they're, you know, well, the, yeah. a better idea. 1300 right. and an A grade both. Right. Mm-hmm. That's very exactly. Impressive. Sounds reliable. Bob McKinnon, it's guestrated.com. More information at eatdrinkexplore.com under today's program summary. Bob, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. And guest rated is the trip advisor for campgrounds. We're going to the trip advisor in the next segment to find out where the top 10 destinations are in the United States for 2013. You'll be in the know if you stick around. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. It will be a while before we see the labeling of genetically modified foods, but that doesn't mean you can't be a smart shopper and head to the store armed with knowledge. Our California Love website has a list of local companies producing food right here in California that are GMO-free and, in most cases, organic, too. Head to CA, as in California, L-U-V, as in shorthand for love, dot com. It's that easy to find our list of local companies with your health in mind. You can also find this list on our Apple and Android smartphone and tablet apps, which are absolutely free in the App Store. Simply search Eat, Drink, Explore and download it to your device. Our California Love website also contains a vegetable and fruit chart so you can more easily buy local produce that's in season. Also, fresh and local recipes from the farmer's market. Head there. Check it out right now. C-A-L-U-V dot com. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to eatdrinkexplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com. Eat, Drink, Explore Media, your lifestyle information source. You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. And a good day, everyone. I'm your host, Randall White. It is time now to hear insight from the best of the best, the gurus of bargains, the luminaries of budget travel. And this week, 
We welcome Leslie Carlin with TripAdvisor.com. Uh, so typically we focus more on like the bargain side of things, but this time around we wanted to focus on the top the destinations, best. the best of the best, the up and coming spots to travel this year. You know, there's always different cities that are sort of in vogue mm -hmm. to go visit our locations. And there's a new list out from TripAdvisor. Uh, and these are all just like our previous guest, based on where the new surge of activity on their site is coming from. And uh, Leslie joins us now. Hi, Leslie. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, well, we're excited to have you because I always sort of want to know where to go. <laughs> Not that I want to follow the crowds, but your list is more, uh, these will be the next big thing. Right, yeah, that's what we were trying to find in this, not just the cities that are perennially popular with travelers, but the ones that over the past year have really shown growth and interest on our site. Well, I'll tell you, uh, the first one that we'll discuss is Austin, Texas, and my mom is from the Austin general area. She was born just outside of Austin, and I have wanted to go to Austin for the longest time. What was it, maybe six months ago, Patty, we had someone from the Austin Convention and Visitors Bureau on the show yes. to talk about the di the different activities and food you can eat. It's such a foodie city. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are, what are TripAdvisor users saying about Austin that makes it so popular? Uh, well, I think South by Southwest, the uh, festival, uh, music and interactive and film stuff has a lot to do with it. Right. It's just been uh, a lot of people go there for that, but like it so much that they end up going back <laughs> at other times of the year. Yeah. So it's got this, it's got a really cool vibe to it, but it's also very laid back. So it's a, there are a lot of great restaurants and cool nightclubs, but not a lot of hipster attitude. Uh, and I think our travelers really appreciate that. Interesting. Lo yeah. Not a lot of hipster attitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean by that. That yeah. can be a little off-putting sometimes yeah. when you're on vacation. You don't you, want to feel like you have you to. You don't belong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just very casual and, um, you know, great foodie scene, as you said. <laughs> I love that. And so um, looking at your list here, it really is uh, spread out throughout the United States. I was a little bit bummed out that there weren't any California locations, but we've been a popular <laughs> the, the yeah. state as a whole has been yeah. extremely popular forever. Right. right. So uh, and these, these are, are kind of looking at the up and comers. So the next one on the list is a little bit surprising to me. I know it's a great city. I've heard so many good things about the food in Memphis, but what makes Memphis next on the list? Uh, well, Memphis is also big for, for food and for music. Um, so for any diehard music fan, you know, you got to go to Graceland, Sun Records. Um, it's still a great place to hear, you know, blues music. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and the food is just great. The barbecued ribs, our travelers just love those. <laughs> yeah, diet yes. for several months. Prior to your so trip, so you can earn that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've never had so many fried things in one sitting than I did when I was in Memphis, and every single thing I had was delicious. Yes. It was really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was there to do a piece on the uh, St. Jude Children's mm -hmm. Research Hospital, mm -hmm. and um, so most of our focus was around the hospital, but we did get a couple of nights out on the town, and we listened to some fantastic blues music, mm -hmm. and we had uh, lots of uh, terrific You were walking food. in Memphis? I was walking in Memphis. <laughs> with my feet, ten, 10 feet off the beal? Is that what? Off uh, the ground? Or? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> At any rate, uh, let's head to uh, Colorado Springs now. I used to live in Boulder, Colorado, and would head down to the Springs uh, from time to time. It is a beautifully situated city. Yeah, and uh, it's it's very popular with travelers who are interested in going outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, so really all year round, you know, in the winter, obviously Colorado is huge for snow sports, but uh, in the summer it's a great place to go biking or hiking, um, a lot of parks in the city. Uh, and, and actually there are some interesting hotels. The Broadmoor is there. That's one of the sort of grand dame old hotels uh, uh -huh. of the country, like really old school luxury. But the rooms there start at around $190 a night, so it's also a yeah, pretty good deal. Affordable. And they just had that horrific fire. Uh, so I know that the Colorado Springs area could use tourism dollars mm. to help boost the economy. A boost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our next destination is Wicked Good, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wicked uh, good, Port Maine. Uh, Portland, Maine. That's their saying yeah. in Maine. Wicked everything. Wicked good. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yeah, it's wicked. It's one of two <laughs> Portlands that made the list. I don't know how often you have two cities that are named the same thing on on in the your top top, top ten, 10 list, but uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll start with Portland, Maine. 
<clears throat> yeah, Portland, Maine. It's um, well, I'm from New England, so I'm I'm very familiar with Portland. It's another. It's just kind of hip and cool. Um, it's on the coast of Maine, so you've got this kind of rugged New England seacoast vibe, uh, but also lots of great boutiques and bookstores, cool restaurants and brew pubs. Uh, it's a it's a really fun place to go for a weekend. An awesome bagel shop is there. We had them on That's the show. Right. Remember, I, I can't yes. remember the name of it. It's the name of the name of the bagel shop is their address. Yes, it is their address. It's something I, street, but I forget. I forget. But what. you have it on Eat, Drink, Explore. If anyone wants to research yeah. that, uh, really just good stuff. Search the word bagel. Exactly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, Denver, Colorado, just up the road from Colorado Springs. Yeah, another another city in Colorado, and this too. This is a great outdoor activity city. They've got 850 miles of bike trails. So mm-hmm. if you're not there in the winter for the skiing, um, you can still definitely you know enjoy the outdoors. And the dining scene is fantastic. They've got a ton of James Beard Award nominee restaurants. Yeah. Lots of young chefs doing really cool stuff there. And you can have a beer or two. Or three. <laughs> yeah. There's so many good, amazing... Breweries. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, in, in Denver. So uh, two front-range cities making it on the list there. Yeah. What's next, Patty? We got Portland, Oregon, our second Portland on the list. And uh, that... I've only stopped through briefly in Portland, but uh-huh. what a great city. I have a big heart for Portland. I love that city. Yeah, and our, our travelers do too. They they think the the restaurants are great, the nightlife is a lot of fun, lots of eclectic kind of uh, bars there, um, and brew pubs, uh, and it's it's a it's a fun place to visit. I almost took a job in the next city, Fort Myers, Florida. I didn't take it though because I did. I was it was between Fort Myers or Madison, okay. and I didn't want year round humidity. So you took snow, <laughs> <laughs> right? I decided. I mean, for me, I just didn't want that, uh, mm-hmm. but. But a lot of people love to flock to Florida, and apparently Fort Myers is the new place. Yeah, Fort Myers is is good. You've got some great beaches over there. It's a a great place if you're interested in deep sea fishing. Uh, It's a good uh, sort of jumping off place for that. And you're also really close to Naples, which has more kind of upscale restaurants and hotels. Uh, it's, It's a it's a neat part of Florida. It's not uh you know crazy like Orlando or you know, sort of uh, super busy like Miami. It's, mm-hmm. it's more laid back. Okay, so our next stop is my hometown, Phoenix, Arizona. And really, I understand this. Who wouldn't want to go hang out with my family? <laughs> <laughs> As you just did for the holidays. <laughs> You know what? Uh, we have to wrap it up there. Phoenix, Dallas, Texas, and then Gatlinburg, Tennessee round out the list. You can find a link to the complete trip advisor list and what makes each city so special, including a list of the top 10 world locations at our website, eatdrinkexplore.com. Leslie Carlin with TripAdvisor. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right, stick around, everyone, because next hour we speak with the owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Farm. Lots of controversy there as Can't wait the to hear about this. federal government works to shut them down. And then also interesting gift ideas for the holidays, the Ooh, foodies good. on your Ooh, list stay that tuned. like to do things at home. And then we'll talk about working honey into your holiday recipes. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Piper, and we're back in just a little bit. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat, Drink, Explore media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat, Drink, Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and we'll be back on the air shortly. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break. We will be back shortly. Thank you. 
get the latest audio, video, and breaking news from Eat Drink Explore Media by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We're easy to find. The URL extension for all of those sites is simply Eat Drink Explore. Thank you for your patience. The Eat, Drink, Explore radio show is currently in a local commercial break and will be back on the air shortly. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a very good morning, 9 o'clock straight up on this Sunday fun day. Patty Pyburn joining me as well. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, everyone. So one, happy to be here on this Sunday. Yeah, one thing Patty does uh, while we're talking during the commercial break is she's constantly <laughs> Googling, you know. And I'm on the internet. <laughs> it's a compulsion. <laughs> she said, Randall, you have to check this out. So uh, we're a big fan of Luna Red Restaurant, mm-hmm. which is uh, just a few blocks from us here. Uh, great, fresh, local food. And one of the things that we like when we eat there is uh, they don't bring you just, uh, you know, restaurant giant tub of uh, dressings. You know, they make a lot of their own yes. stuff there. And so um, I meant industry dressing. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> they get shipped to you. Right. No, they make it themselves. And now they're selling those in yeah. for the holidays. You can buy, for instance, the, uh, the reduced... The balsamic um, uh, vinegar. No, the thing is, they have quite a few gifts here, but the one that just really does it for me, because when we're there having lunch and they bring you the bread and olive oil and balsamic on the plate. Yeah, Yeah. can't get enough of it. And so they mentioned, hey, you know, um, you can buy this as a holiday gift. So for 18 bucks, which I think is a pretty good price point, you get their special blend of olive oil in a bottle with a little dispenser top. And as you pour it out, the way the the olive oil and basalmic mixes together or doesn't mix together, it comes out in a stream. So you get like the right ratio. Oh, that's so cool. And it's the, so cool. And if it's I local, I just, it's local, it's affordable, 18 bucks. If you're looking for, you know, what do I get yeah. mom? I, or, you know, something you coworker, you're not sure what to get. Right. And, uh, it, they reuse a lot of their stuff there. Mm-hmm. It looks like they've reused one of their Luna Red wine bottles, and that's how they do it. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't say here, but I, I wouldn't be surprised because, right. like you said, they reuse all kinds of things. So their old menus become, you know, little coasters. And yeah, so. and this is not an an ad for them. We're just literally no, we just saying sin- this because we just sincerely like them yeah. and <laughs> like this gift idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we thought we'd share it. We have some really great uh, gift ideas coming up. Mm-hmm. It's this uh, company in the Bay Area that has just exploded with popularity and. And they're adding, so they're really popular for their at-home mushroom kits uh, so that you can grow. It doesn't take very long, and you get like a pound and a half of uh, really high-quality mushrooms um, right there in a box. It just grows in a box on your your counter. Uh, But they've added, they're just now adding, this is brand new, uh, aquaponics. And that's where you have, Anthony, you first told me about this. Um, You grow it, really any kind of uh, plant in with a fish tank. So the fish, you know, they do their business and fertilize the water. <laughs> uh, and it, it's literally making use of everything. Wow. <laughs> You've wow. Exactly. You feed your fish and your vegetables. Okay. So, um, I can't wait to hear more about that. All ki- <laughs> I bet you can't. <laughs> you're, kind of, you're kind of worrying me a little bit. I was never good with fish. I'm oh. not sure what would happen. <laughs> Hey, uh, this uh, past Friday during the uh, holiday Christmas parade, the San Luis Obispo holiday Christmas parade, um, we had such a great time. And you can watch that online at eatdrinkexplore.com. Just click on holiday parade. Uh, One of the things we did immediately following the parade is uh, I had made up a batch earlier in the day of coconut milk eggnog. That recipe is online uh, right now under our recipes Mm -hmm. section, along with a ton of other great ideas for if you're hosting a holiday party or that sort of thing. 
And um, Patty, you made a really easy to put together but super delicious easy. assortment tray. Yeah, it's kind of an hors d'oeuvre kind of thing. And I should give you the recipe for that. I mean, it's super easy. It's just um, whatever little small cherry heirloom, heirloom organic to- uh, tomatoes you can get your hands on. Usually if you get the red and green combination, yes. it looks great for Christmas. The um, soft sliced uh, mozzarella cheese. Mm-hmm. And just mix together the heirloom tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, crushed garlic, and a little bit of salt and olive oil. Mix that all together like a salad. Serve it with the cheese and some crackers, and and you had those voila. Bodine sourdough. The sourdough. Uh, I guess they're cr- croutons, kind of cruets. Yeah, perfect. Good for that. stuff. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that is um, a San Francisco original. That bodine or bakery. goat cheese is another one you can add to that. Yum. All right, we're back in one minute with a final hour of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. It will be a while before we see the labeling of genetically modified foods, but that doesn't mean you can't be a smart shopper and head to the store armed with knowledge. Our California Love website has a list of local companies producing food right here in California that are GMO-free and, in most cases, organic, too. Head to CA, as in California, L-U-V, as in shorthand for love, dot com. It's that easy to find our list of local companies with your health in mind. You can also find this list on our Apple and Android smartphone and tablet apps, which are absolutely free in the App Store. Simply search Eat, Drink, Explore and download it to your device. Our California Love website also contains a vegetable and fruit chart so you can more easily buy local produce that's in season. Also, fresh and local recipes from the farmer's market. Head there. Check it out right now. C-A-L-U-V dot com. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network, live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Fabulous. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. And a good Sunday, fun day morning, everyone. Great to have you with us. 9.06 the time. We have sunshine up and down the state. I don't know if you got a chance to catch the sunset last night. Wow. You know, we looked outside and my brother said, that is an Arizona sky right there. That's what he said? That's an Arizona. Yeah, because we get you get. So it's 110 degrees and... um... (laughs) Just the sky. (laughs) Oh, just Just the the sky. sky. Okay. It yeah, was it was it was a gorgeous uh, sky last night for sure. And uh, red skies at night, sailors delight. That means nice weather's on the mm-hmm. way, and we do have several days of uh, good weather. I don't True know how enough. accurate that saying is, but it seems but to work out. That's what that's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say exactly. Uh, lots of great stuff coming up on the show this hour, including uh, we will speak with the owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Farm. And Drake's Bay Oyster Farm in danger of being shut down, in fact, under orders to shut down by the federal government because they are currently in a zone that will become wilderness area. And uh, their 40-year lease has uh, run out. But, boy, it really has sparked outrage from the public. And we will talk to the owner and find out uh, what the next step is. There is a uh, a lawsuit underway Mm -hmm. to stay operating. So we'll uh, talk with owner uh, Kevin Lunny about that. And then also great gift ideas for the holiday with holidays rather with an at home foodie twist. If you want to grow your own organic Mm -hmm. side dishes. (laughs) What a cool idea. (laughs) And what have you. Uh, We will uh, speak with the founder of a company up in the Bay Area called Back to the Roots. And then our final guest is a Chef who will focus on using honey in recipes for the holidays. And love it. The coconut milk eggnog I made the other day uh, included honey from the Central Coast, uh, the Atascadero area. Mm-hmm. And I think it came from pin- pinion-, pinion trees or. I'm not sure. You know how the honeys will... The bees will go to one source. Yeah, I said honeys. Depending on where they're located. Yes, (laughs) those honeys. (laughs) Those honeys. (laughs) You know how they are. Right. Uh, So a lot to come up, uh, coming up on the show. But uh, right now it is time for us to switch over to our trivia segment of the day. This is where we test your knowledge on the week's news. 
Patty and I work to stump each other with uh, <laughs> trivia questions we've both designed. And uh, Patty, you want to go first? Sure. You know, we talked earlier about the um, a number of people who get live trees and also are now renting trees from a tree rental service. This is true. Okay, so I have a couple of uh, questions in that vein. Okay. So using small candles to light a Christmas tree dates back to the middle of uh, when? Like which century? Yes. To the uh, middle of when? <laughs> I'll say <laughs> to the middle of the house? To I the didn't middle finish of- <laughs> writing that question. I knew no. where I was going with it. <laughs> I'll say the middle of the uh, 1500s. The middle of the 17th century is Uh-oh. when the tradition of using candles, but people did start using the electric lights. Okay. Which is now given way to LEDs uh, about 1890. Oh, electric so, lights as early as 1890. Huh? So for all those years, candles were the way, and we know that's not the safest way. No. It's not the safest way. I have seen, though, candle lit trees. They're really beautiful. Uh, you know, they're, they are beautiful. But a little dangerous. They're very dangerous. You want to yes. do it for a extremely short period of time and just long enough to take Under a family photo. Under constant supervision, <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, <laughs> before the house burns down. With the fire extinguisher at the ready. All right, Patty, a new $1.2 billion stadium being built for the San Francisco 49ers in Santa Clara hit a milestone this week. What happened? They featured the, the uh, rather, they issued the Future Stadium's first season ticket for the 2014 season to the mayor of San Francisco. Uh, steel beams were placed at the highest point of the structure, topping out the building. The new Highway 101 ramp connecting to the stadium was completed. So many choices. Hmm. Uh, 49ers' new home. I'll go with one. They gave the mayor a ticket. I don't know. (laughs) That's my guess. I would imagine the city of San Francisco isn't thrilled that the Niners will be down in Santa Clara. Oh, <laughs> but, uh, right. I wasn't paying attention to which mayor. <laughs> right, no, the uh, steel beams were placed at the highest point of the structure, topping out the building. So okay. that means it's sort of, now it's got its structure. Got it. And uh, the beams will be painted. These two beams were placed. Mm-hmm. They'll be painted gold and signed oh, by the construction crew members, of the team, and city officials. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. I need to listen to the question more closely next time. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Okay, so number two, who came up with the idea of using those electric lights on Christmas trees? Was it Thomas Edison? Was it his assistant? Or was it Benjamin Franklin? Oh, okay. Uh, Well, let's see. Benjamin Franklin wouldn't have been alive in 1890. (laughs) I'm going to say Thomas Edison. Okay. I'm sorry. You were close, but it was his assistant. His assistant, Edward Johnson, came up with the idea in 1882, and then those lights were in mass production in 1890 when consumers started using them. Thomas Edison came up with a lot of stuff. He did. But apparently it was his assistant. He had a smart (laughs) assistant as well. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Patty, a uh, study released this past week shows those who smoke when drinking suffer worse hangovers, including fatigue, headaches, and nausea. What did scientists point to as a likely reason for this connection? Oxygen? Oxygen-deprived blood, mild carbon monoxide poisoning, or nicotine in the nervous system. These are people who smoke when they're drinking the night before or have worse hangovers the next day. I'll go with the oxygen deprivation. this morning. Nicotine in the nervous system. Oh, okay. A researcher with the Action on Smoking and Health said since alcohol and tobacco both interact with receptors in the brain, Mm -hmm. it is not surprising that smoking appears to increase the risk of a hangover in people who consume both substances. We were in Avila listening to a concert put on by the Aurora Grande High School Jazz Band last night Uh uh, in front of Mr. Rick's bar. Oh, and everyone was smoking? I was amazed at the number of smokers, but I was amazed at the number of smokers who did not mind to come and stand directly in front of us while we were watching the students (laughs) performance and smoke uninhibitedly right in front of the high school students and i thought really you guys don't know you should at least walk away well you can feel better today knowing that they have horrible hangovers okay good good. i feel better (laughs) (laughs) what comes around goes around right all right patty question number three (laughs) number three when were live christmas trees first sold commercially in the united states 1810 1850 1930 1850. Oh! oh. I know, I, but I didn't realize it was back so far. I didn't either. Live Christmas trees back all the way then. Because some things we think of as traditions really mm-hmm. don't date back as far as we right. think that they do, right? So, uh, all right, Patty, my final question here. What? One more chance for me to get it wrong. <laughs> what recent addition to a petting zoo in San Juan Capistrano, you know, it's where the swallows mm-hmm. hang out, 
is creating a lot of controversy among the zoo's neighbors. A 40-foot-tall dinosaur structure, <laughs> peacocks that make loud calls at all hours, or a snake exhibit where children can hold live boa constrictors. Hmm. This is a petting zoo in San Juan Capistrano. The neighbors are a little bit upset. It seems like it might be the first 40-foot-tall dinosaur. I don't know. I feel like I'm not going to get this one right <laughs> either. <laughs> Oh, finally! <laughs> no, it's Dino the dinosaur. Dino it got, the dinosaur. Yeah, it was moved in there, and um, I saw a picture of it online. I thought it was really cool, but the neighbors these think are it's like messing up the view. Beautiful two hundred year old homes. It's one of these uh-huh. uh, upscale uh, neighborhoods that's been around a long time, and they're like, this does not fit. They're not loving the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the dinosaur apparently is still under consideration by the city. It might get yanked and oh. uh, become extinct. <laughs> Stick around, everyone. Right after the break, we're talking with the owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Farm. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. It will be a while before we see the labeling of genetically modified foods, but that doesn't mean you can't be a smart shopper and head to the store armed with knowledge. Our California Love website has a list of local companies producing food right here in California that are GMO-free and, in most cases, organic, too. Head to CA, as in California, L-U-V, as in shorthand for love, dot com. It's that easy to find our list of local companies with your health in mind. You can also find this list on our Apple and Android smartphone and tablet apps, which are absolutely free in the App Store. Simply search Eat, Drink, Explore and download it to your device. Our California Love website also contains a vegetable and fruit chart so you can more easily buy local produce that's in season. Also, fresh and local recipes from the farmer's market. Head there. Check it out right now. C-A-L-U-V dot com. I don't recycle. I mean, we can just find another planet for your kids to live on, you know? Noted non-recycler Tommy Crenshaw talks about the future. Oh, I can totally see finding another planet that can support life when ours fills up with trash. Log on to yougottobekidding.org and learn about all the ways you can recycle. Unless you're into lame excuses like Tommy's. Hey, recycling's just not my thing. Starting over on a new planet? Now that's exciting. Don't be that guy. Unless you want people looking at you funny. Log on to yougottobekidding.org. Across the nation, people are stepping up for their mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, partners, sisters, and brothers. They're leading the way and walking to end Alzheimer's, the sixth leading cause of death in the nation. Together, we can reclaim the future. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Start a team. Join a team. Go to ALZ.org. For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to eatdrinkexplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping 
shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com. Eat, drink, explore media, your lifestyle information source. All right, 919 the time and a very good morning, everyone. Great to have you joining us. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by the lovely and talented Patty Pyburn. Good morning, everyone. And if you were listening to the show, you know about the controversy surrounding California oysters going on up in the Bay Area. Uh, Boy, but... It's not just a Bay Area story. This has taken on a national focus, uh, primarily, I think, because the National Park Service, the Department of the Interior, is associated with this story. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it would be a great idea to uh, have on the show the owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Company to go straight to the source and find out uh, what is happening here. And so uh, owner Kevin Lunny joins us right now with Drake's Bay Oyster Farm. And a good morning, sir. Good morning. We appreciate having you on the show. I imagine you're hearing from media outlets constantly right about now. Yes, it's been an uh, interesting few days, I will say that. Now, just to bring everyone up to speed, uh, you had a 40-year contract with the uh, Department of the Interior to raise oysters in Drake's Bay there, and uh, that expires in 2013. And there was an option the possibility that it could be extended by 10 years, but uh, Ken Salazar, the uh, Secretary of the Interior, decided not to go with the extension and has given you three months to shut down your operation. Is that right? That is essentially correct, yes. And were you surprised that when this decision was made, how the community would react? Um, Not really surprised. Um, There has been just enormous support for the continuation of this historic resource, um, throughout this seven-year ordeal uh, where this whole issue has been discussed. And uh, we felt that the Interior Department was clear on how Marin County and the Bay Area felt about, you know, keeping this resource alive. Um, So it was actually a a big surprise that the decision was made this way. You have some... uh Pretty heavy hitters on your side, uh, U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein, who is a very popular senator from the state of California, uh, has weighed in on this issue. What is she saying? Well, um, our hat's really off to Senator Feinstein because early on in the controversy, um, she was actually called in by the Marin County Board of Supervisors to look at this in detail, and she did. She had her staff really dig in and see what was actually happening and she was outraged Um, she recognized that this was there was a campaign of false science and misrepresented facts by the park service now that's not my words those are the words of the national academy of sciences and the interior inspector general and mm -hmm. um, so she was outraged so she stepped in to try to help um, correct some of these you know falsehoods from the park service Uh, so she's been a great uh... A great voice. And this was science that took place during the seven-year period you mentioned to see what your impact on the uh, the natural surroundings were, correct? That's correct. There were some studies done before, um, and, and, and the issue was that the Park Service misrepresented the findings. And mm. the, the, the studies actually show no, no serious effect at all, and the Park Service claimed that there were and cited those studies, and that's why... Um, that's why this was, you know, a concern. Now, Kevin, I'm curious. Um, we were saying early that uh, earlier that you have filed a lawsuit. Obviously, your intent is to uh, save your operation there. Now, do you th- see a way that both um, goals could be met? You could continue doing what you're doing. The Park Service could uh, reach the goals. That it- is there a resolution here? Is there maybe a way that isn't being considered yet on how to make this work? We've always felt there is. Um, this is a this is an example of a 
you know, a, a fantastic working landscape where we can have resource conservation and food production at the same time. And that's what Point Reyes National Seashore is. It was created out of these working landscapes. And the ranches that are all surrounding Drake's Estero, where the oysters live, it's all part of this, um, of this experiment to see how well uh, these uses can, you know, coexist. And you raise grass-fed cattle on, that, on the piece of property that you're talking about. Yes, we're one of the ranches. Um, I'm third generation there. I'm born and raised looking out over the estuary nice. from our home. And uh, we have uh, certified organic grass-fed beef on the ranch. I know the area well. I was born and raised in Novato, and we took, uh, you know, the the traditional family Sunday drive. Mm-hmm. We would take uh, Sunday drives out to Point Reyes National Seashore. Back then, I called it Point Reyes. Point Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how the locals uh, would would say it back in the day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but Point Reyes is such a beautiful spot to go. And uh, in a just a moment ago, you mentioned food production. If I have our facts and figures correct, an article I read in the San Francisco Chronicle said that your operation, the Drake's Bay Oyster Company, provides uh, nearly 40% of California fresh oysters. Is that true? Um, that is that, what it does. It, it produces roughly, well, we'll call it a third and sometimes more mm-hmm. um, of all the oysters grown in the state of California. And all that food stays in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so it's really been part of our local, you know, sustainable food supply for, you know, generations. And that's where that whole restaurant trend kicked off, where you right. uh, source locally. And mm-hmm. so you, it's not uncommon to see Drake's Bay oysters on the menu at a lot of top Any Bay Any prediction on what would happen if this all follows through the, what, you know, the Department of the Interior would like to see happen, which would be to close down the operation? Any prediction on what that does to supply and demand and prices of oysters? Um, there have been some estimates that this will really cause an increase in cost of oysters, but it's also their decision to remove the oyster farm has, you know, enormous environmental consequences at the same time because Mm -hmm. we have such a seafood trade deficit already in this country. It means that we're going to be shipping more in from Asia. And so in the Bay Area, instead of uh, local oysters, it would be oysters maybe from Korea. And, uh, And so there's the estimates are that we'll still have a demand for oysters in the Bay Area. Just we're just going to lose the sustainable local supply. No, and I'm curious, and I and this is something I'm I'm totally uneducated on. Do oysters that come from other areas meet the same standards as our local? I mean, obviously they're coming from farther away, so that just inherently they're not as fresh. We know that, but do they meet the standards under which you know your oysters are produced? Um, no, they don't. Um, we actually. And the other thing they don't do is they they can't they aren't meeting the same environmental standards. Oh. What we do is, in in many ways, and even the National Academy of Sciences believes um, it actually enhances the uh, the health of the estuary because of their filter feeding and their hab- their habitat value and all the things that oysters do. That's why they're putting them in the Chesapeake Bay and in San Francisco Bay because they'd like to have something as healthy as Drake's Estero. So coming from abroad. Um, will have, you know, certain environmental consequences as well. Kevin, I saw a quote from the owner of Hog Island Oysters. He said that on any given day, he cannot meet the demand currently with your operation in full production, uh, and that he just can't even imagine what it'll be like if you shut down. No, um, actually, the other oyster farmers in California have all weighed in and saying, you know, this is a, uh, this is a travesty because we do. We supply all those Tomales Bay growers so they can keep their um, their production, their their demand going because, and, and their supply because they can't produce enough. And uh, and we actually have water quality such that we can continue to harvest right. when Tomales Bay can't. Hey, Kevin, we only have one minute left, and I want to address what about people who say, you knew you were getting into this. You had a 40-year lease. It's running out. Uh, what about what would you say to those people? Oh, that's, uh, that's been an interesting argument. Um, what we did, we did our due diligence. We looked at the 40-year agreement, and it's explicitly um, renewable. There's a clause right in the contract. We talked about it with the Park Service before we took over and made sure that it could be renewed. It's never been um, considered 
non-renewable. Well, we'll be following this closely. Kevin Lunny, owner of the Drake's Bay Oyster Company, we really appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday morning to join us. Well, thank you. 928 The Time. We're back in just a moment with a couple of Christmas gift ideas wait for to hear the about that. foodies in your life. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. You can always find our program information online, eatdrinkexplore.com. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. McGruff here. The crime dog? Yep. I think I'm going to need your help. I've got an internet bully. Okay, well, what you do is... Maybe you could put a virus on her computer. Or a tracking device. Or a bug. You don't have to do that, all you... Or maybe we could get an attack dog. You ever see those attack dogs that can, like, rip a person's arm off? Seriously. Um, or like a SWAT team. A cyber SWAT team or something. Or like an army. Did you ever see that zombie army movie? We should get a zombie army. Wait, wait, wait. All you need to do to stop an internet bully is delete their messages and never forward them on. So, no no zombies? No zombies. Bummer. Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it, don't forward it. For more information, visit ncpc.org. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, Crime Prevention Coalition of America, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows, and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.npca.org. At the American Lung Association, we're fighting for a day when we can all breathe easier. We're fighting for clear skies over every city and healthy lungs throughout the country. We're fighting to free millions of Americans from the addictive grip of tobacco and the devastating effects of lung disease. The American Lung Association isn't just fighting for air. We're fighting for all the things that make it worth breathing, and we can use your help. See what you can do at fightingforair.org. This is Betty White. I know you don't need one more thing to worry about, but listen. High blood pressure can cause kidney damage, blindness, heart attack, stroke. And you can have high blood pressure even if you feel all right. One in seven adults has it, but it's easy to get your blood pressure checked, and you can treat it if it is too high. So don't worry about it. Don't ignore it. Just see your doctor and check it out. For your free booklet, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. 
Yes, yes, yes. It is Sunday morning, 9.33 the time. Great to have you joining us, everyone. I am your host, Randall White, as uh, Monica just said there. Patty Pyburn joining me on my right. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Patty. And Patty just, uh, so Patty is a journalism professor at Cal Poly, Mm -hmm. San Luis Obispo. Because there is the Cal Poly Pomona as well, yes. and uh, you, one of your students, just tweeted out saying that Eden is her name. That yes. she's listening to her teacher on the radio as she drives home <laughs> to the Bay Area. She's going up to a Niners game. So good morning, Eden. If you're still listening, thanks for tuning in. I thought that was really cute. <laughs> and if you're leaving San Luis Obispo County mm-hmm. and you're listening on Crush ninety two point five FM, right around um, well before King City, mm-hmm. between Paso and King City, and that stretch in there, San Miguel, uh, she can switch over to AM ten eighty KSCO, and she'll be able to listen all the way to and, that Niner game and keep tuning in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. on that station. So, uh, yeah. Even though we only have a half hour left in the show, that right. takes some pretty fast driving. But and Eden- <laughs> have some fun <laughs> right. at the game, too. Thank you so much. Okay, so we like every single week, we like to give you uh, some ideas for Christmas shopping to keep it local, keep it yeah. sustainable, and a unique idea. I love, love, love this one. Yes. So, Patty, you were looking up information on our next guest, and you saw that their product makes a full circle environmentally. It's the coolest thing. They have this graphic on their website, uh, which we have, I imagine, linked from eatdrinkexplore.com. We do. It's back to the roots. So if you want to go to eatdrinkexplore, you'll find it that way. Or back to the roots will get you to their website. Mm -hmm. Um, They have, (coughs) excuse me, this great graphic. And it shows that coffee beans are grown on certain continents. Then they turn into coffee, which we enjoy. And then the grounds are recovered by back to the roots and put into their product to grow mushrooms which are then enjoyed, and then the customer who has that mushroom kit returns that used earth back to the ground, so it is a complete full circle. Uh, It's so cool. Isn't that fantastic? Love it, love it, love it. And you get these wonderful high-grade mushrooms, about a pound and a half, I believe. And I Uh, am a mushroom lover. Yeah, grow it. Let's let's go to the source, one of the co-founders of Back to the Roots. Uh, You may have even seen him on TED Talks, which are, uh, I love watching those. I love uh, those. TED Talks segments. Uh, We are joined by Nikhil Aurora. Uh, He is co-founder of Back to the Roots. So welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you guys for having me on. Oh, well, we're happy to have you here. We love your company. A good friend of mine, Christopher Douglas, he's a a chef up in the Bay Area. He took a picture of your product and uh, texted to me this past week and said, you have to have these people on. (laughs) I said, okay, well, let me put that together. (laughs) And we did. So, Nikhil, how did you get the idea to do this? Yeah, it was actually kind of funny. It was uh, about two and a half years ago, and totally random. It was our last semester at UC Berkeley, and uh, my friend Alex and I had no background in food or anything to do with, <laughs> you know, farming, let alone mushrooms, and we were in a business ethics class. We are both undergraduate business students up at UC Berkeley, and we were in a class, and our professor brought this, he brought this, you know, random fact he had read somewhere, one sentence in a you know, lecture about sustainability. He's like, I even read somewhere you know, mushrooms on coffee grounds. And we, uh, Alex was going into investment banking. I had an offer to go into consulting. We kind of thought we knew we were doing the corporate world. And right. for some reason, I one fact inspired us both. We didn't even know each other. It was like a 150-person class. We both reached out separately to him and asked him for more information. He was like, honestly, I have no idea. This other kid asked me about it, too. Uh, you guys should link up. And that's what we met and um, ended up starting to experiment in Alex's fraternity and uh, went from there. So, uh, so what you do is you make these at-home mushroom kits, and you use coffee as one of the uh, ingredients for the soil. It just so happens that there in the East Bay, you have a pretty large coffee supplier where you can get these grounds, right? We do. So we partnered up with Pete's Coffee now, and we collect about forty thousand pounds a week now of coffee ground waste uh, from Pete's. The stuff they used to be throwing away, pick up every morning now, bring it back. We turned like a an old warehouse in Oakland, like a 10,000 square foot warehouse into our urban mushroom farm and every morning collect the coffee grounds and use that as a soil for these, uh, these mushroom kits. Our radio studio That's just great. happens to be directly above a Pete's Coffee, <laughs> and Pete's sponsored our broadcast of the San Luis Obispo Holiday Parade this past Friday night so that we could air it commercial-free. It was pretty cool. So along yeah. with those uh, mushrooms, Nikhil, you're also doing something with aquaponics? That's right, yeah. It's actually, so we've we had the mushroom kits about a year and a half now, and, you know, it's been a, it's a crazy roller coaster where them going from, like, one Whole Foods to we actually sell them in, like, Nordstrom's and 
Home Depot now. And we're like, I think we just fall in love with this concept of like creating these experiences for people to grow their own food at home sustainably. And, you know, I think through this whole urban farming movement, we just heard a lot about aquaponics, that idea where you can, you know, kind of bring the synergy between fish and plants and fish can help plants grow. The fish waste is such a great fertilizer and plants in, in turn kind of clean that water out for the fish. And um, you fall in love with this concept and thought, like, how can we kind of do what we did with the mushroom kits and shrink this really cool concept but shrink it down and add design to it so we can make it accessible for, like, homes and classrooms, you know? So we just uh, launched actually a Kickstarter, like the crowd crowdfunding platform, our second product, right. which is the first ever home aquaponics kit. So, so it's a Kickstarter program. I love. We've featured different people on the right. show before that had Kickstarter ideas. And so, uh, how? What's your goal? How much do you need to raise for this project? So we are actually uh, we set out to raise a hundred thousand dollars to pay for the molding and the tooling. And it was a thirty day campaign. We actually have six days left, and uh, it's been incredible. It's been so cool seeing the response. We're at about one hundred seventy five thousand dollars right now. So you've so, passed. Yeah. You've exceeded your goal. We did. We we hit the goal like almost like two weeks, and this has been it's been so cool seeing people's response to it. And wow! Right now, it was like we have six days left to like build awareness around aquaponics and trying to get like a ton of classrooms involved in this too. And you know, it's uh, it's been super exciting. So, Nikhil, just to let people know, because I'm looking at a picture of it, the aquaponics is basically a little fish tank. It's got a fish in it and plants growing on top. Yep. So it's a small, and basically what happens is this is that water, which is. All the fish waste, in some senses, it has tons of nutrients in it. It's like it's pumped up that water to that growing bed up top. And we have basil, you can grow, you know, oregano, arugula, baby greens up top, whatever you want up top. And so the fish, that fish waste is fertilizing the plants. And there's no soil. It's just all the nutrients coming from that water. And the plants are trying to cleaning out the water. Um, so like one of the biggest things with fish tanks, you got to clean out your water every, like, week or so because all those nutrients eventually become toxic for the fish right. as they build up in the water. So but in this case, the fish feed the plants, plants clean the water out continuously, so you never have to change your water in your fish tank either. It's a really cool kind of symbiotic relationship and this little fun ecosystem like right there in your kitchen counter or classroom, you know? So and, now you have two full circle <laughs> right. operations. And this is tied yeah. into education at schools too, which is really awesome. Yeah, that, that's our big goal. We just think this is like we can, in our minds, we pick this from like every classroom, you know, for Kids can have it running the whole year long and, like, see things grow and understand, you know, how is stuff fertilized and what does nutrients actually mean and, like, how do plants go. We just, we just imagine it's literally in every single classroom and um, that's what we want to do it. So. Are these aquaponics systems already available for people if they wanted to purchase them or order them online for a Christmas gift? So, unfortunately, we're, we're, we needed this Kickstarter campaign to get the funds to launch them. So right. Right now, it's just available on Kickstarter, like a pre-order. So we're going to be launching in late Feb um, when the product's all ready. So right now, we have a little IOU kind of gift certificate that you want to give it to somebody for the holidays. Like, this is on your way, you know, but unfortunately, the physical ones won't be ready until late February. I like that. So Yeah, that's awesome. So a fish in the home is no longer just eye candy. It is, <laughs> it's actually serving a purpose yeah. and helping you grow. I love the arugula idea to grow a fresh arugula at home. Yeah. I, could, mm-hmm. I could eat that daily. And it's really great because it's got to get the kids interested. And what a great way to get them involved in growing food at home and having the, the fish on the countertop. I love it. So you keep yeah. growing. Have you had to like jump from warehouse to warehouse to expand your uh, footprint? <laughs> We we had the last last we st- we graduated um, in '09. Spent like two and a half years now actually doing this, and we've gone from like a 500 square foot spot to a thousand to the warehouse right now is a 10,000 square foot um, little urban mushroom farm. So it's been nice. it's been fun, and you know we still bootstrap this whole operation. It's just been like a ton of support from the community, and I, we just feel like we just fall in love with this. like our whole vision is that like, can we bring like design and ease of use to like growing your own food and connecting with it and we think if we can we can reach so many more people you know then um you know we started off selling our mushroom kits as these big like bulky clear plastic bags of fungus so we could barely <laughs> sell at a Berkeley farmer's market you know and right i think we realize that you design it you make it easier to use and all of a sudden we can sell it in you know bed path and beyond and it's just like yeah. that like taught us such a valuable lesson and now we think we can do that we can get so many more people excited about growing their own food they're attractive what what are yeah. the is there more than one type of mushroom you can grow, or do you stick to one uh, specific kind? 
Right now, it's actually just the oyster mushrooms. Um, they just they go the best on they go in ten days on, on the coffee ground. So even the, the, something like shiitake take about one hundred eighty days to grow. So wow. I also think about that experience, like especially like kids and family people otherwise wouldn't want to go there and food. Like right. I, I can do ten days, you know. <laughs> the quick payoff. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I <clears throat> cannot wish you more success <laughs> because it's operations like this that I think this is. This is United States ingenuity mm-hmm. at its best, the way where we have this uh, entrepreneurial spirit that is uh, s- clearly working. Yes, amazing innovation. And what a great way. It just gets people involved in you know, the whole system of food and doing it for yourself. And I mean, talk about local. It's growing on your kitchen counter. Yeah. And you can get it just about everywhere. It sounds like. Uh, whole you know, Foods. <laughs> I know. Depot. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone has one of those in their yard somewhere. I noticed that my uh, if you're watching us online right now, my video stream uh, froze. So I'm in just sort of like a mid sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're listening on the radio, everything's just fine. All right. Nikhil, Aurora, we really appreciate you joining us this morning here on Eat, Drink, Explore Radio, and you have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you guys so much uh, for inviting me on. And by the way, just to all your listeners, if you guys are ever around uh, the Oakland area, we do a ton of tours of mushroom farms, so you can just check out our website. And oh, that's I'll good to know. To around, so. How cool. I'm going to tour it the next time I'm up there. Thank you, Nikhil. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. Stick around, everyone. We are coming back for our final segment, speaking with a chef who will give you great tips on incorporating locally raised, would you say, honey? Raised? Is that what you do? Do you raise honey? Produced? I don't <laughs> produced, know. Locally yeah. produced honey. Sweet. Back in a moment. Some of California's best restaurants, hotels, and homes are perched on steep hillsides with incredible views. But those buildings weren't just thrown there. They were placed on foundations designed and perfected by experts. Throughout much of the Bay Area, those hillside foundations were placed by S.S. Caveney Construction. With nearly three decades of experience dealing with the steepest and most difficult terrain, S.S. Caveney Construction is well known for being the go-to company when quality is your number one concern. Hillsides in California, as you know, are prone to drainage issues that can lead to erosion and slippage. SS Caveney Construction will solve those problems for you. Get a quote today by contacting the team you need. Head to SS Caveney, that's C-A-V-E-N-E-Y dot com and get your foundation placed correctly the first time. It will be a while before we see the labeling of genetically modified foods, but that doesn't mean you can't be a smart shopper and head to the store armed with knowledge. Our California Love website has a list of local companies producing food right here in California that are GMO-free and, in most cases, organic, too. Head to CA, as in California, L-U-V, as in shorthand for love, dot com. It's that easy to find our list of local companies with your health in mind. You can also find this list on our Apple and Android smartphone and tablet apps, which are absolutely free in the App Store. Simply search Eat, Drink, Explore and download it to your device. Our California Love website also contains a vegetable and fruit chart so you can more easily buy local produce that's in season. Also, fresh and local recipes from the farmer's market. Head there. Check it out right now. C-A-L-U-V dot com. Hi, this is Rick Moranis. You know, some people are more careful about what they feed their cars than what they feed their bodies. They know that the wrong fuel can hurt a car's performance and maybe ruin the engine. But the wrong food can have the same effect on your health. Too much fat, too many calories, and too little of what's good for you can affect how well you feel and even lead to serious illness. So eat right. It'll help you keep running smooth. For more information, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Wayne Brady for the Will Rogers Institute. Hey, folks, I've got something that will truly revolutionize your life. It's called exercise. It will get you from here to there, allow you to spend time with your family and meet new people, cut inches from your waistline, and improve the quality of your life, even help improve your self-image. Sexy. So when you've got to choose between moving around or lying on the couch, choose exercise. You won't be sorry. For your free booklet, visit wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. 
For the latest video and information from today's show, head on over to EatDrinkExplore.com. We're constantly updating it with the latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Also, we're launching a new section of the site called California Love. This is where we recommend great companies. And the best part is every single business we feature is locally owned. We've checked them out and are confident you'll love them as much as we do. This is a great tool to have as we head into the holiday shopping season. Since you're already spending money, you might as well support your neighbor. We choose businesses that give back to the community, care about the environment, or use only the freshest local and organic ingredients. They also make their products here, not overseas. Our California Love business recommendation tool is still in the development stages, but will be available very soon at eatdrinkexplore.com. Eat, drink, explore media, your lifestyle information source. Forty-nine. Now the time. It is the final segment for this edition of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. You can always watch previous segments or the entire show, if you like, at eatdrinkexplore.com. We do a video simulcast uh, that looks better and better every week, I think. We redid the graphics this week, so it's fancy new. <laughs> fancy schmancy. <laughs> That's right. One thing that we do is recommend good gift ideas like we had in our last segment. The other thing we do is we recommend great recipe ideas, especially heading into the holidays right now. We are joined by Chef David Guaz, uh, who has some tips on working honey into your recipes, which I just did the other night when I yes, made did. my homemade eggnog. I had never had homemade eggnog. I've always had the store-bought kind, and when I looked at the ingredient list on that, I thought, oh, <laughs> maybe <I'm> not. <laughs> never doing that again. And so, Would it uh, have, like, guar gum or something in it? All kinds of, yeah. The number one thing was, like, uh, you know, a high-fructose corn syrup. And so I thought, no, I am going to uh, make my own with real egg yolks, and I'm going to use honey. Uh, mm-hmm. to sweeten it and uh, it was delicious we did it with a little spiced rum and I gotta say a little <laughs> spiced rum Randall I over rummed it a and... lot of spiced rum <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, at any rate uh, Chef David joins us now and a good day to you sir thank you thanks for having me on you're located where you're in Virginia uh, we are. We're just uh, a mile outside the nation's capital, across the the Great Potomac in Arlington, oh, yeah. Virginia. Oh, Arlington! Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful spot. Uh, so you are with the National Honey Foundation, is that correct? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm the spokesperson, the chef uh, for the National Honey Board. Yep. Board, board. Okay, yep. yes. And so uh, you are here to explain why honey is a great addition to the holidays, and I couldn't agree more. I just bought a jar, <laughs> a ten dollar jar of honey at the uh, farmers market. We have a good Saturday morning market here in some local stuff, San Luis Obispo. Sure. Yeah, and uh, every honey has a slightly different taste. I love when they have the the people with the little tasters. You can try yes. the the lavender honey, the you know whatever it might Eucalyptus. be. Eucalyptus. Yeah. And so uh what's your favorite aspect of using honey in recipes in place of sugar? You know, I, I you touched on the head there for that when you talked about the the eggnog, you know, it's 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 a natural sweetener obviously. It uh it uh it brings the the flavor at which it has into different recipes and formulas um you know and getting them at the farmers market is is easy but you know they're they're now pretty much major grocery stores carry their own lines of local as well so it's what it is is not just your farmers market these days that carry these great varietals right. uh, and a lot of times you can find the local ones which is fantastic which means there's obviously some more press and exposure around uh honey and, and grocery stores are stepping up uh to, to have local aisles uh for that so accessibility is is great now and, and the resources is very easy to to to, to, to grab now um, <clears throat> for me in, in the baking world uh you know it really acts as a natural preservative so you know if i put a little a uh, couple tablespoons in my normal uh, muffin batter, say my banana um, muffin batter or, or banana nut bread. It's gonna, mm. it's gonna give you an extra couple days uh, after that's baked. You know, so uh, act, acting as a natural preservative. Really? Uh, yeah. There's there's uh, there's some rules to baking with honey. You know, it is gonna bring a little bit darker of a browner a browning to the baking process on um, baked goods. So uh, you know, there's some tools and tricks that you can go on to the honey website uh, honey honey dot com and find out sort of how to adjust your temperature maybe by 15, 25 degrees here and there, uh, almost like you're interchanging sort of
of the convection versus the convention of in temperatures. Um, but nonetheless, of not a very difficult uh, formula to sort of uh, change. Um, <clears throat> you know, I also like it um, in salad dressings and sauces. Yes. Uh, it's got a great mouthfeel. You know, we all know what honey tastes like just right out of the jar. You know, it's got great viscosity. Um, you know, it just sort of coats your tongue. Well, it's doing the same thing when you incorporate it into a, a dressing or a glaze. Um, so great on the barbecue grill. If you take a little bit of honey and a little water just to thin it out slightly and, and throw a, a pastry brush in there, a boar's hair brush, and baste uh, poultry, pork, etc., cetera, mm. uh, maybe some fresh rosemary in there, and you, you create sort of a glaze, you're going to get great caramelization on yeah. the grill, uh, either direct heat or indirect heat if you're going to go ahead and smoke something or, or put it on the open flame. Uh, like anything, though, you know it is it is sugar uh, in the sense it's sweetener, so it is it can scorch. But if you you add it properly and sort of you know uh, watch it and continue to baste it, it can bring some unbelievable flavor and color to finished uh, proteins. Patty's um, face sure lit up when you mentioned grilling. <laughs> I that know, is like, her oh, number that sounds one. Good. <laughs> you know, David, it's interesting what you say about the preservative aspect of it. And I had sure. heard before that some honey had been found in in a like a pyramid and that it hadn't spoiled after I feel like I read 5,000 years or something. It was still good. I don't doubt it. So so it's a a property in the honey that then you can kind of transfer that to your food. That's interesting. Definitely. Yes. I love that. And, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're going to go into the canning or preserving business, you have got to follow the rules of the FDA. Right. But <laughs> right. I'm not telling you to start a jarring, you know, company out of your basement. <laughs> right, with, exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, yes, it, it, essentially it is what you just said. It is a natural preservative. It's being, it's, honey's been used for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. It's written in the Bible. It's written in the, you know, it's just everywhere. It's been around. It's one of those things that, you know, I think that as a chef, for me personally, I've taken uh, for granted for many years that it's just, oh, yeah, there's honey. But to really start to play with it and um, and sort of interchange some sugar or maybe something that called for Lyle's golden syrup or, like you said earlier, Randall, about um, um, the uh, corn syrup, right. you know, so just taking it out because the weight and the body, the viscosity is almost the same. So, you know, if you have the opportunity to explore and to take something you've been you've been making for years and, and just sort of say, you know what, this time I'm going to put two tablespoons of honey and I'm going to take out this. I mean, you do have to know what which one's sweeter so right. that you can mm-hmm. balance that. But at the same time, once you know those little tiny little hints, it, it opens a world of, you know, exploration with, you know, sort of bringing different flavors to something that you've been eating for, you know, 10 years and, those and really sort of just gives you some that... Um, some nice balance. Yeah, those, those bees know know what they're doing. It's it's like a it's one of those nature miracle foods. I've yeah, always right. been fascinated mm-hmm. by honey. When I was a boy, if we had a sore throat and a really bad cough, uh, my mom would mix together uh, honey and mm-hmm. apple cider vinegar and wow. uh, warm it up a little bit, and then. You know, I still do that today. Right. I had a cough that would not go away a couple of months ago. I did that, and boom, it was gone. Mom's home remedy. So I don't know what the properties well, are. Maybe you know, it- with burns and cuts, and they say, you know, it does a lot of wonderful things. And it's, you know, again, how can you go wrong with a natural product? It's, uh, you know, that's why you see it popped up in the cosmetic world. And right. You see mm-hmm. it in, in lip balms and everything else and soaps. And, you know, it's, uh, it is. It's it's just a beautiful thing that's been around us. And also the texture, the, the availability of yeah. the different forms of honey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, from the raw, from the pasteurized, to the strain, to the creamed, mm-hmm. to the, you know, the... The, the one with comb, you know, so it's just, I don't know, I think it's a great educational piece, too, for youngins to bring them in and let them sort of right. taste the different textures and, and the flavor profiles, and obviously I have my favorites. I'm a huge sourwood guy, and uh, I adore sourwood honey, and uh, and uh, there's a few others that I'm a big fan of, but, you know, there's essentially anything that flowers that, that honeys can, that the bees can 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 eat from or essentially can, can be uh, extracted honey, so well, it's... Uh, Chef David Guaz yep. with Bayou Bakery there in Arlington, Virginia. I'm glad you, we have a link to your bakery website. I'm glad you mentioned honey.com. That's very mm-hmm. easy to find. Also, the Honey Board shared a number of recipes with us that we will put on eatdrinkexplore.com under our recipe tab. Chef David, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, sir. All right, and you've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Thank you to all of our producers who helped put together today's show. We had a lot of tweeting underway with Dresden and (laughs) Michaela here in studio. And welcome to my in-laws who were in studio as well. Have a great day. You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.